Hello people, in this video let us look at this laryngotracheal trauma. So, uh, some trauma to the larynx, okay. Here we are talking if larynx and trachea both are affected, what will happen? The cause is like automobile accidents, neck strike, okay, something hits the neck, okay, a blow to the neck, a kick to the neck or the neck is struck against a wire or a cable, strangulation, penetrating injuries with sharp instruments, gunshot injuries, all that causes you will write. Pathology, what will happen? Based on how severe it is, there will be that much damage. There can be hematoma, edema, tear in the mucosa and then that can lead to emphysema. Uh, dislocation of the joints, fracture of the joints, all the joints you can mention, all the bones, sorry, uh, dislocation of the joints, yeah, fracture of the bones you can mention like hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, tracheal rings, all these can get fractured. Trachea may separate okay and retract into the upper mediastinum. This is the only thing they have written about trachea, is it? tracheal rings also can get fractured. So what and all are the nerves that can get affected guys? The recurrent laryngeal nerve, the superior laryngeal nerve, right? All those nerves can get affected. Clinical features very easily you will say larynx is affected. So what and all? Respiratory distress, hoarseness in voice, difficulty to swallow, pain obviously pain, hemoptysis because of tears in laryngeal and uh, tracheal mucosa, vomit with blood, right? Hemoptysis. Now what are the external signs? You will definitely see a bruise, aberration on the skin. Then you will see that when you palpate it will be painful. That's called tenderness, right? Subcutaneous emphysema, it may increase on coughing. Thyroid prominence may have got flattened, yeah, because somebody hit the punch the neck okay then uh, fracture displacements of thyroid yeah we already said this and uh, the gap may be felt between the fragments yes bony crepitus yes all these uh, because uh, all, all the bones fragments okay separation of crico cartilage from larynx or trachea okay why always they're talking about separation of the cricoid cartilage? Why only cricoid cartilage will get separated? Is it trachea may separate from cricoid cartilage and retract into upper mediastinum? Something like that. They seem to be very concerned about this cricoid cartilage's separation. Okay, diagnostic evaluation. How will you uh, evaluate? How what and all will you uh, investigations? Laryngoscopy, indirect laryngoscopy, rigid endoscopy, flexible laryngoscopy through the nose. You can go. How will you do indirect laryngoscopy through the mouth? Right. Flexible lar laryngoscopy, they are going through the nose, but where into again the larynx only, right? Yes, that's why it's called laryngoscopy. Then obviously, you order one CT of the larynx. 3D CT is very good, they are saying. If there are some other injuries, you can um, check other parts also. Now, what is the treatment? Conservative, hospitalize them, observe for respiratory, respiratory distress, voice, rest, then humidification of inspired air to what calm it down steroid therapy antibiotics to prevent any infection right to prevent perichondritis and cartilage necrosis surgical what will you do guys tracheostomy obviously you will uh, uh, create an breathing if breathing is difficult then they will have to do a tracheostomy open reduction what is this three to days three to five days after injury within that you should do open reduction that means uh, you will open, that means you will definitely cut it open, some surgical open reduction. If there is any fracture of these cartilages bones, they can be wired and replaced in their anatomic position. Mini plates made of titanium can be used for immobilization and cartilaginous of cartilaginous fragments. Some mini plates of titanium they are using. Okay. So, what are we looking at guys? Injury to the larynx and uh, trachea, right? That is what we are looking at. So, larynx, uh, what and all did they talk about? These uh, cartilages can get fractured. Here, imagine one hyoid bone also. The hyoid bone also can get fractured. So, in case of fracture of all these, uh, what are they suggesting? They are suggesting, where are we? Here. Mini plates made of titanium can be used for immobilization if there are fragments. Okay. Mucosal lacerations can be replaced, sorry, repaired with cat gut. Okay, wait. Then epiglottis is anchored in its normal position. Basically, they are bringing back everything to their anatomical position. And if it is already avulsed, it may be excised. Because they said epiglottis is not very important for swallowing and they can remove it in carcinoma. So, here also if it is already avulsed, avulsed means what? Avulsed is more like torn away, guys. So, here you can see the epiglottis. So, in case in some trauma, it has got torn, then they can excise it. What are we looking at? We are looking at the surgical treatment. So, arytenoid cartilage also can be repositioned in normal position. Same thing they are telling again and again. So, in larynx, what and all cartilages are there? Tell. 
We have three unpaired and three paired. So here they spoke about the unpaired ones. If th uh, thyroid, trichoid, epiglottis, how you will manage? Bring them back to the uh, anatomical positions. Now what happens to the unpaired ones? Arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. Where are they? They are somewhere here, right? In the posterior part. So if something, is hap something has happened to them, how will you manage? So let's go back here and read. Arytenoid cartilages can be repositioned in their normal position or they may be removed completely avulsed. Same thing. Okay. Laryngotracheal separation end to end anastomosis can be done. Anastomosis means what? Joining. So a larynx is on top and trachea is at the bottom. And in case they are apart, torn apart, then you can anastomose can be done. Internal splintage of laryngeal structures may be required. It is done with laryngeal stent or silicon tube which may have to be left for 2 to 6 weeks on an average. Just remember this word stent and all that. Okay, laryngeal stent. That is going to help in what? Laryngeal splintage. Here they are showing some laryngeal stents. Okay, let's continue. Webbing of anterior commissure can be prevented with a sialistic keel. This keel word we have heard many times, right? Webbing of anterior commissure. Anterior commissure means of the vocal fold, right? Webbing. If there is webbing, then it can be prevented by a sialistic keel. Actually, for um, uh, web, laryngeal web also, same word had come, remember? So, this is your vocal fold, right? So, let us say here the vocal fold is there and here there is a web. So, this is uh, the anterior part. So, this is anterior commissure. So, there is a web there. So, then they will put a sialistic keel or something here, okay? Something like this. Where exactly is it? Need more information on that. Anyways, now we are done with the surgery. Now let's look at the complications. Uh, laryngeal stenosis, which may be supraglottic, glottic or subglottic. So remember, there can be stenosis of the larynx. Perichondritis, yeah, we said infections can happen, abscess. So that's why they gave antibiotics in the uh, conservative treatment. Vocal cord paralysis also can happen. Okay, so this is about uh, laryngeal trauma. So, in this we looked at laryngotracheal trauma, the causes, the pathology, um, then we saw the diagnosis, what we will do, then we looked at the treatment, conservative treatment, surgical treatment and we also looked at the complications. That's all for now. Bye-bye.